No, that's not bad at all. I love where I live. I love being in the studio too. That's fucking sick. Yeah, living home alone. Do you do you live alone? No, I live with roommates. Uh, in Joliet. Yeah. Are they all still? Are they all comics? No, nah, they they're all construction workers. <laughs> what? Yeah. So so I've never seen them. <laughs> Okay, so you don't even have to worry about that. Nah, yeah. No, it's cool, bro. I think I've said hi to my roommate like twice. It's crazy. It's good, though. We ain't, we ain't in. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what keeps rent low, bro. More roommates. <laughs> yeah, man. You got to save that money for right now. Yeah. Once it pops, pops. Yeah. Then you can go oh, yeah, for it. sure, bro. So, okay, man. So you started in Juliet, like we were saying, on the way here. Mm-hmm. Um, what got you into stand-up? Like, if you're in a not stand-up area. Uh, I, w- I mean, I, was, I lived in uh, Peoria for a while, too, bro. So... Obviously, the greatest comedian of all time is for Peoria, so you hit to hear his name a lot. And Who's the greatest comedian of all time? Mom, Richard Pryor, dog. I didn't know he was from Peoria. Yeah, but born and raised in Peoria, dog. So you get to hear that a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, yeah, you know, we got Richard Pryor in Peoria, you know what I'm saying? We got, you know, so I, so you get to hear that enough, and they got a comedy club out there, too, so um, a good one. So, I mean, I got into it kind of over there, per se, but I really didn't get my first gig till I came and moved to the Burbs to be closer to Chicago. Right, right. What, what even like? Did, were you like the funny kid growing up? Or you always cracking jokes back of the bus? Uh, center of attention per se, bro. Mm. I mean, I, you like, it's hard being this big and not being yeah. <laughs> center of attention, dog. You're always gonna get noticed regardless. So, yeah. Did you? Are you? I, I picture you with a big family. You being the baby. I'm yeah, pic- uh, that is crazy. Not a big family, but I'm the baby, bro. But uh, okay. uh, my, well, my, my dad has thirteen brothers and sisters. God. So, I mean, a big family from that side, yes, yeah, that aspect. But my immediate family, I just have one older brother and then my mother and my father. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. But you still the baby. Yeah, so, yeah, I still a little baby, bro. So. How are they feeling about the comedy? Uh, they're good, bro, man. I just recently uh, was working in Kansas City, too, bro, so it was dope. And my family lives in Kansas City, Missouri. So uh, they were able to see me live for the first time. Yo, yeah. and it's been four years, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did the, how was how was that for them? Oh, it was dope, bro. Bro, you know, man, if... If you were ever around a Mexican family, bro, you know they're very uh, they're very happy for you as far as, like, if they see you do good in something, they're very prideful. Mm. And so, like, it was cool, man. Like, my dad sat me down. He really enjoyed it. Uh, my mom was, like, speaking words of affirmation. Like, it was dope, man. Like, I was happy. Uh, they got to see me in my bag and uh, do well. And then my brother and his girlfriend were there. So it was just, you know, it was cool, man. My, my, my close family saw me and... They approved immediately, and then, like, now I showed them why I do what I do and yeah. why I sacrifice so much. When when uh, when you first said, oh, I'm doing stand-up, were they, like, iffy about well, it? Well, first, my first artistic adventure was acting. So that was rough in the beginning, low-key. Like, I remember telling my dad I was dropping out of college to be a police officer to try to pursue acting. My dad was flipping out. He was like, well, when are you going to start making real money? I was like, shh. The average actor doesn't make it till they're like 45. And yeah. I was 20 something at that time. He was like, what? And I was like, yeah. So, I mean, I pursued that. And then I, I just, you know, one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to try comedy and did it. I liked it. And I, comedy was very side thing for me for a while, for like the first three years, right? I didn't take it as this, I didn't take it serious till this year. And uh, I wish I would have taken it serious four years ago when I started because I know I'd be miles away. But, um, I fell in love with it this year for sure. Yeah. It was more like a side piece, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever had a side piece, side chick? <laughs> and you didn't know if you should promote her to the main, to, you know what I'm saying, to be the main? Yeah. And so I ended up falling in love more with comedy and thought it was acting, but it wasn't. And comedy is a thing. And now I love comedy. So now it's my main squeeze. That's awesome, man. Yeah. All right. Let me write some shit down. I'll go ahead, Keep myself bro. organized here. So starting with acting. Yeah. Well, first off, you were, you were going to be a cop. Yeah, I was, <laughs> Good, I was gonna. I was gonna be a police officer. Here anymore. Wait, wait, I'm I know. I see some substances right here, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Why? Why? Why do you want to be a cop? I, I just wanted to make a difference, bro. I think it sounds cliche, but I definitely wanted to make a difference. I saw a lot of bullshit things that were going on with us. Not necessarily just police officing, but I feel like the community was rough on a lot of areas and. One of the things I wanted to do was community policing, and I feel like a lot of those cops didn't do that at all over there. And there was a reason why there was a division in race. There was a reason, like, and I felt like if I, they just had one cop that brought everybody together, it would end all that. 
That's so beautiful. Yeah, I know, but fuck that. I'm yeah. here to <laughs> I'm here to tell jokes about cocaine, homie. God that's, damn. That, what, so, that's a one eighty dog. But no, it's the thing too, man. Like I just wanna make a difference and I wanna make uh, I wanna make you know what I'm saying, I wanna make people, you know, feel good about themselves. So, you know, you start to get to think about it, I'm like, you know what? I have the platform of a police officer, I can only do so much. But if I have the platform of an artist, an entertainer, my platform will grow so much bigger and I'm able to bless more people per se. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just felt like the, the ceiling was capped off at a police officer. Yeah. But being an entertainer, the ceiling can go fucking, you know, yeah. really, really high. So at that point, I'd have a bigger platform to, you know, you know, let people be people's escape and, um, you know, shit like that. So that's surprisingly selfless. Like. I I selfless not selfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I I mean when I when I talk to most of these comics yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or even for myself I'm like you know doing this guy I want on some level it's like yeah. I want attention and there's a self expression thing yeah. but it seems like you want your goal is to like bring people together for sure for sure bro and and the thing is, is it's cool man because like as a reason I started doing headlining shows and I love how diverse the crowd is mm. you know like obviously you might see a lot more Latinos or whatever but You'll, you'll see plenty of black brothers in there. Yeah. You'll see your sisters in there. You'll see some white folks, some Asians, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm happy that my jokes are able to be, you know, d diverse per se. So what was the re like, were you raised in this way to like to, to emphasize on community or something like that? Like what? what my dad would always looked out for people, bro. Mm. And I saw that growing up. My dad always was helping people. Always. If, if my dad had twenty dollars and there was a homeless person on the street he'd give him that 20. um like my dad was very selfless bro like he, he just always helped people yeah. and like i just saw how blessed he was and how blessings would come back tenfold and uh you know i just see that and, and you know it's hard to not be inspired to be like that when your pops your main guy is uh the, the person that he is and everybody like that's been around him knows that like that's the og like cause my dad it, he was, he was, you know what I'm saying? He had a rough coming up, you know what I'm saying? He was one of 13 kids, bro. So my dad, was he, he had a rough coming up. So for him to be as nice as he is, it's crazy. Like, my dad dropped out of first grade, bro. Can you read? No, bro. Oh. My, my dad my dad knows four languages, dog. What? Yeah. What does he speak? My dad can speak English, Spanish, Italian, and Greek, bro. God damn. My dad's a beast, bro. It sounds like school was holding him back. Yeah, real <laughs> shit, bro. Like, dude, my dad can take take apart an engine, put it back together. Yeah. My dad's a a, a king in, in the kitchen. Like, bro, my dad... Like it's, it's when these people were in school were telling me you need school to be successful. I was like, no, you don't. My dad can cuss you out in four different languages, homie. That's just wild. And he learned it because he worked in kitchens. He worked in Italian restaurants mm. and majority in Greek restaurants. So he learned off of those just to alone. Yeah. My dad's a beast, bro. So that's that's uh, yeah. As you could tell, bro, I'm very uh, speak highly of my pops. Mom's is dope too. She yeah. she uh, she grew up with money though. My dad did it. My dad grew up on a farm. Yeah. My mom was ghetto fabulous, dog. Like, my grandmother, she was the highest ranking nurse in the biggest hospital in Mexico. Yeah. So they had plenty of bread. They grew, she grew up with a maid. So it's crazy. Your, wait, your mom grew yeah, up with a maid? Yeah. So my mom grew up with a maid. So it's kind of crazy. I was like, Mom, like, you left that type of life to be with my pop? She's like, yes. You know? You left me smooth, huh? Yeah. But I was, no, what's crazy is my dad didn't even want my mom, bro. My mom was the one chasing her, bro. My dad had a piece in Mexico while he was in California. Yo. Yeah, bro. I do. This story is crazy. And then, yeah, my mom kept consistent. And she was persistent and got him. I, 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 I man, I want to meet your dad. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, dude. My, my mom knew what she wanted, bro. And then, uh, you know, so, and like I said, my, my pops is smooth, bro. Everybody loves him, dog. Like, um, that's why I realized at a young age, bro, that being good people is. is will dominate every other fucking aspect of anything, you know? So. I feel you. Like, See, I'm. Um, <laughs> I did not have the same upbringing. Uh, uh, my, I, yeah, like my dad, not around much, yeah. and my mom's uh, loves me, but is not exactly the nicest woman. Got you. Uh, and I found recently, like I've been talking to a lot of comics about yeah. this. Actually, the importance of male figures in your yeah. life, mm -hmm. like that shit. It seems like you're successful because you had a, a a guy to look up to. 
bro, I've always had powerful men around me. I've always had powerful women around me. I've um, even to this day, like I'm, I'm happy to say like my mentors are millionaires, bro, and they're just always giving me keys and you know, and they're always helping me in different areas, bro. And I think that's one of the things you could take advantage, bro. If you are good people and you know how to talk to people and you can make people laugh, bro, and you make the right person laugh, dog. Opportunities are endless. Not necessarily just in like business opportunities but the friends you meet bro because mm. as of recent you meet i met very interesting people that have helped me more than people that have known my whole life okay you know what i'm saying i i met this person that put me on somewhere they only knew me for a week but they knew i was good people and they put me on somewhere you know what mm. i'm saying to where there's somebody out there that i've known for 20 years and they haven't put me on nowhere you know what i'm saying yeah so this, shit, this comedy shit's a fucking gift bro like if you can entertain the right people, bro, it's over with. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I, oh, I'm excited to keep. Okay, yeah, okay. go ahead, bro. So, so, all right. So you decide you wanted to be a cop because you want to help the community. Yeah. You're in cop school. They make you yeah. run, and you were like, "Fuck this." Or, or <laughs> whatever. No, I was decent, bro. Because I played soccer, rugby. Like, I you mean, played I, soccer. Yeah, bro. You goalie? No, I was a forward, bro. Okay. I was, bro. Because the forwards are all skinny. And shit. Bro, I used to push them little motherfuckers around, bro. Like, they used to be pissed, bro. Yeah, they're like, how the fuck is Gordito running this much, bro? Like, you know? And so I played soccer, uh, but basketball. But you were always big, but you were able to just. Yeah, 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 bro. I, even, to, even with the stomach and these stretch marks, bro, don't think it's easy on this court. You okay. catch me on a basketball court, don't think it's easy. It's like, I'm that one fat friend that can hoop. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> you the Mexican Escalade. I'm Bro, I'm a Mexican <laughs> Nicola Jokic, goddamn it. I don't give a fuck if I'm two feet shorter than him. Okay, so then what? Why did you stop? Why did you stop the cop school? Yeah, well, just to pursue art, bro. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to pursue art. Um, I really wanted to, uh, like I said, uh, put the impact out at a higher platform. Okay. Like I was saying, being a cop, I think your ceiling is... You know, you even have restrictions, per se. Like, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. To where, like, I could be online acting a fool and, you know, and be me, but also help out people, you know? Because, trust me, bro, I do enough charity shows a year to where I can sleep at night, you know? And I always, I'm always involved in, in charity events, and I'm always involved in, you know, and I'm still able to be me. You mm. feel me? So, I'd, I'd hate to be a cop and be like, hey, you can't say fuck online. I'm like, fuck that, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so then you went into acting. Now, yeah. why was acting the first go-to? That's just something I was always interested in, bro. And I had a homie, my, my boy Mario Cannon. He it was an Empire. Mm -hmm. and um, He was on Empire? Yeah, he was on Empire. And, he, you know, he, he, uh, he helped me out. He put me in position to meet the right folk. And um, I ended up just, you know, started hitting the nitty-gritty. I feel like everybody starts off, starts off as an extra. Mm. And then... Uh, as you network, as you meet people, you start to really put yourself in position to start doing, like, you know, school short films or even big production short films. And then you start meeting the right people that will put you in other stuff. And so I ended up uh, working, 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 and now I'm signed to Hayes Talent. And they're top, I want to say the top acting agency, period. For Corey Hendricks from The Shy is on Hayes. You know what I'm saying? He's Chicago. All the big wits, bro, are are on, are on the the Hayes talent agent. I'm the I'm pretty sure I'm the only Mexican on that mug too. Hey, it's an all black uh, agency, and they they yeah. She um, shout out Michelle Hayes, bro. She put me on, and uh, but yeah, I've been on BT Plus, bro. I've been on North of the Ten, uh, a movie. Uh, it got a bunch of folk in that too, bro. Matt Rife is in it too, bro. Oh no shit, yeah. yeah. So Matt Rife is in that mug. Uh, I had a co star role in it, and then uh, the same director put me in this different film. Uh, BT as well, Canal Street. So it's crazy. I always tell people, I'm like, bro, BT, Black Entertainment Television has shown me more love than Univision or Telemundo, bro. Like, I have <laughs> not been a part of a novella, and but my black homies always got my back, dog. So that's awesome. Bro. Yeah. They okay. So so you start acting and you just you're just auditioning, right? Yeah. Like oh yeah, on. like a muffler, bro. Like today, I got my. Uh, so when you audition for these big productions. You obviously submit your audition, and then uh, it's a waiting game after that. After that, you'll hear that you first refusal. First refusal pretty much is saying you have you are in the top three, top five out of all the auditions. And then you wait until you're either released or top, selected. Top three, top five out of how many? Like a lot? Yeah. Okay. So um, today it was funny. I, I auditioned for a Cash App commercial, and uh, – 
I got first refusal, and then today in the morning, their email f- subject was so misleading, bro. Said Happy Friday, and then I'm like, Oh my God, yeah. I'm gonna reopen this, and it's gonna say you got the role. And I looked up and like, You are released. Thank you. <laughs> That's all. It I was like, Well, it says like, Thank you for auditioning. Uh, other, yeah, you know, do not. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it pretty much could have said, Fuck you. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know. So <laughs> the fucking subject said Happy Friday. I was like, You bitch. That's a fucking bait and switch if I've ever. I swear to God, bro. But hey, we keep working, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. You know, uh, I don't know you that well. That's yeah. kind of the whole point of it. Yeah. But if I'm to put you in my own words so far, it seems like the people in your life were strong, focused, smart, nice, positive people. And going into acting, you've kind of taken that mentality. Because mm-hmm. I know um, I know acting is, is a difficult one because it's not like stand-up where you, you get up there and you just show what you got. Yeah. Whereas acting, it's a lot of red tape. you got to jump over hoop after hoop. Memorize. You gotta, you know, become somebody you're not. Sometimes, yeah. bro. And um, obviously, nine times out of ten, I get uh, typecasted. Yeah. So yeah. I'm always a thug, regardless. As far as if I want to do something, be a doctor. No, sir. You're gonna rob the doctor. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, doctors but, can't have braids. <laughs> doctors are not. Don't don't have thick hair. Like, yeah, right, 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 like, you know. Right. Yeah. So, but what it is, what it is, bro. I'm not one of those Latinx type folk that gets pissed about. Being typecast, I am what I am. I am what the consumer wants. I am the, what the consumer sees me as, and uh, consumers will pay my my fucking bills. So okay. I am what they put me as, bro. I ain't. so so you start acting. What was your first gig? Your first role? Probably a student film, bro. I've done so much that it was probably a student film. Um, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> I think it was probably, yeah, it was probably a student film, bro, but it's been, you know, see, comedy was four years ago, film is like six to eight, so it's kind of rough to think, think all the way back. Right, it's hard to remember. Yeah, all but it sure. was probably a student film, bro. Okay, okay. And how did you, God, I'm fucking up over here, how did you, <laughs> um, how did it feel, man? That You know that first, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain to people that don't do the entertainment yeah. industry. But it, it, it mean, at least from my experience, when you first start, it feels like this dream. Yeah. And then that first, th- that first time you get paid doing comedy, yeah. that first joke that hits hard, yeah. that first applause break. What was that? I mean, do you remember any of those firsts? That yeah, I would think I was more nervous than anything. Mm. I don't think I was like excited, or I was just damn. But I learned at a early stage that like it's okay to fuck up per se in film because they could just. Edited. Shoot it again. Right, right. Cut. Do it again. All right, do it this way. All right, cool. Boom, boom, boom. Bet. All right, cool. Did it right? Cool. Awesome. Even if it takes three, four takes, I'll fucking get it right sooner or later. Right, right. And you, you're you not doing, like, plays? You're just doing film? I did a couple theater plays. Um, That's a whole different beast. Yeah. I will say you are a monster if you could hold yourself on in a theater play versus film. How so? There's no cut there's no editing there's no you have to and if you mess up you have to finesse it like if it's natural not only then if your other castmates mess up you have to put them on your shoulder and right. and put it as nothing is wrong so shout out to all the theater folk out there because that's that, yeah and yeah it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot of work yeah rehearsals like a mug too bro so did you ever have to have um like a i mean a day job or work? always, bro. We always gotta get some type of bread, bro. Dude, how do you balance? Because I mean, especially with acting, because yeah. it's so you gotta keep yourself open for auditions. Yeah. How do you balance acting and and um, work? You got to get a. You gotta get a. First of all, you gotta get a good job as far as under. Not necessarily financially, but you got to get a good job that understands and that is flexible. Mm. First and foremost, you have to prioritize that, and then. Build social equity. Build social equity with people, because when you need to take a withdrawal out, it's gonna be big. And 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 so, for example, what I want, I always tell you, social equity. Oh, say I'm a good social equity. Yeah. So build on social equity with people, bro. Because be open to to assisting people. Be open to helping out people. Be open to working for people necessarily for a low wage or whatever. I build social equity with my work 
doing, you know, favors, you know, covering for people, et cetera, et cetera. Because the day that I had a random audition in person in downtown Chicago at 10 a.m., mm-hmm. I was able to cash out on my social equity. They've known that I've helped them out a lot, and I the only time I ask is when I need to do stuff for real. So right. build social equity with your job because one day you're going to need to take out a deposit, bro. So Okay. Man, you had a really good dad. <laughs> I could, I could just yes. feel. I could just feel. Yes. That felt like some shit your dad has been said to yeah, you. Yeah, bro. My, my dad always just preaches, man. What comes around goes around, bro. You treat people good. God's gonna see it. He's gonna treat you better, bro. So. Man, I want to talk to your dad, man. How, oh, dude, everybody does, man. I gotta, I gotta, we gotta, we gotta book him, bro. Yeah. Is he gonna watch this? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. My dad always, dude. My dad's my biggest supporter, bro. My mom and dad were like, I'll tell you, I'll keep it a buck. It was rough in the beginning. Yeah. My dad didn't necessarily see the vision. Yeah. But it took him maybe a month or he needed to see the concept. I needed to prove the concept. He needed to see me in a film. He needed to see me in a skit. Mm. He needed to see me and then when he saw the proof of concept and he saw how happy it was, he put his feelings to the side and was like, You know what? This is what you wanna do. I'm here and then yeah, dude, my dad's been my mom and dad been rocking with me ever since, bro. So yo, I have the they can't see it. I have the biggest smile on my face just because like <laughs> he's cheesing, bro. So but yeah, it's because that's yeah. that's beautiful, man. Like yeah. I've been doing this pod now since I moved here. It's been about two years now. Yeah, talked to hundred some odd comics. Yeah, not a lot of them. Not a lot of their parents, especially as fast. Yeah, not a lot of their parents like are on board oh dude it's rough man and i see it all the time bro and like i can never give them an advice because i don't understand Mm. like and i feel bad bro i feel true trust me i think it's even worse in the acting community because at least with comedic comedy you can work every day if you wanted to Mm -hmm. if you wanted to go to a mic if you wanted there's so many different outlets but for actors we're just sitting and waiting and then if we're sitting and waiting well we just got to audition. We got to practice monologues. But that's not necessarily, you know, being out there per se. You, you just sit and wait. So it's hard to prove the concept to your family. But I feel horrible for those people because I just don't understand how that would feel. Like, I, the support of my parents is everything. I'll tell you how it feels. It sucks. Yeah. Uh, dog, yo, I uh-huh. recently, this is a feeling I, that, that I couldn't get over. Recently, this month. First month I'm ever paying rent with comedy. Hell yeah. Congratulations, bro. That's real. Thank you. That's fucking lit, bro. That's Thank real. I, I, man, I, for years, I've been doing this shit for eight years. Yeah, bro. For years, I've been like, ah, oh, this is the, this is the, and I did it. I, I told my mom, like, the month was coming up. I was like, yeah, you know, I pay, I pay, you know I'm paying rent with stand up. Just bulldoze right past that. She doesn't give a fuck. Fuck and and I'm sorry, bro. I'm happy for you though. Thank you. I'm proud of you, dog. Cause, dude, <laughs> trust me, bro. When you, when you start getting a, a nice check or two, bro, you realize that this can happen. There's money in this, and yep. and and once you yourself prove that concept, not anybody else. You're like, you know what? This can really happen. And uh, but yeah, man, I'm proud of you, bro. That's real. Thank you. Um, when you get that first couple nice checks, it's like I want more. Like I want, you know. I, it, I, and you know what it made me realize was I don't know if you had this feeling because mm-hmm. you you we were raised a little different. Uh, in my head, I always had the dream of like, God, oh, you know, the, in my head, it was like, oh, I'll get once I'm paying rent, I'm always paying rent. But I didn't realize like, oh, no, 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 you pay rent this month and you hustle for the, for next, the next month one. and the next month. And, and the it doesn't one, the next one. And it's like not a bad hustle either. No, nah, bro. I mean, dude, trust me, bro. I struggled like no wonder, like because I left my parents' house at 21, right? And uh, not necessarily they kicked me out. I yeah. had to do it because um, they we were living in Peoria at the time, and they had to move to Kansas City. Yeah. But I was going to school at the time, so I couldn't transfer my credits to the school over there. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna finish school, yeah. bro. After they left, dude, God showed me. I do. I had my canon events from Spider Man. <laughs> I had, bro. <laughs> Dog, I, it was rough, bro. And, like, I, I went through some... I was damn near homeless, bro. Really? I, I was living in my homie's couch. I was... Dude, it was rough. And and so the final straw was... While I was living with a family friend over there, my homie hits me up. He was like, hey, bro, like, I see you're, you know, you're doing your acting thing. Dude, my car was breaking down, like, type shit. But I was still driving three and a half hours to be an extra in a film. Yeah. Like, trying to get my hustle in Chicago. And... He goes, hey, bro, I got a room up here in Joliet, bro. Like, you want to come back home? He's like, I was like, yeah, bro, you know what? I got to make the jump, man. If I don't make the jump now, I'm not going to make it ever. And it's funny because even people in Chicago are like, damn, you drive 45 minutes. Like, that's nothing compared to the three and a half hours back and forth that I used to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I put all my money in the gas. I, I put, I invested so much into this shit, bro. So, like, 
now that's why I still love acting, regardless if it's my side shit now. Comedy's my main squeeze now, and um, because of how much I struggled for it, how much I sacrificed for it, mm. and it put me in a position now to where like I'm able to do so many things with it. Um, you know, and like I said, bro, I made the right people laugh, dude, and I ended up getting a couple of uh, brand deals. So I'm I'm excited, man. I'm uh, working with Los Comales. Uh, What's that? Los Comales is like the biggest Mexican restaurant in the city. That's and awesome. So and they're branched out to the suburbs. And shout out Larry. Shout out to the whole Los Comales family for believing in me. Um, I'm their first artist they signed to a deal with them. And uh, so I'm be doing skits, commercials. Uh, I'm hosting their uh, their Mexican Independence Day festival in Little Village, it's December yeah. 16th. Like, so I locked that in, and and we're in for like yeah. So we're in for almost like a six month deal. Then I'm also shout out to a attorney of Chicago Injury Law, um, my boy Mos. Uh, I'll be doing skits with him. He sponsors all my shows, and um, you know, so you I can tell you, bro, you make the right people laugh, bro. It's you know, there's money to this, bro. But I don't do it for the money, obviously. I, the, do it with a purpose and do it out of the genuine part of your heart, and you'll see that the money will just come. Yeah, there's your dad again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there goes my pops, bro. Yo, I okay. Okay, so to, I want to get into the 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 when you were struggling in yeah. your home, all of that stuff. It's 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 a piece of this this game that I don't think most people get. Like, if you don't do this shit, you don't realize. Like, mm-hmm. you don't know what when you. Uh, good example, Richard Pryor. Yeah, we, we talked about Richard Pryor. Motherfuckers, poor as shit. He mm-hmm. had no idea he was gonna become Richard Pryor. Yeah, and when you're sleeping on couches and shit you don't know mm-hmm. that you're gonna be here mm-hmm. so mentally what's going on emotionally like i'm happy every fucking day <laughs> bro i uh <laughs> you know uh i because you look back at a lot of those stuff bro you really do man because trust me bro like i uh i'm very grateful bro even for when at times i was struggling mm. i still thank god bro because i feel like people lose faith when things are rough and that's not what faith is about you keep faith even in the bad times, bro. Like, it's not like right now. Like, I'm already, like, bro, believe it or not, I'm fat, whatever, right? <laughs> but I used to tr- strategically eat just so I've had food. Yeah. So I would have maybe five, ten bucks, right? And if it was after seven o'clock, which is obviously in the health form, you're not supposed to eat after seven. Right. But me being fat, I'm fucking starving. Yeah. But I'm like, is it worth it to eat right now so I can starve in the morning? Or should I sleep right now and wake up so I can save a meal for the next day? Now, my parents had no idea that this was going on. Did they- I didn't want them to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I don't want them to know that. And, like, I've told them stories here and there, but I just wanted to really make this shit happen. And when you want something so bad, bro, you'll starve some nights for it, bro. And, like, I really went through shit mentally i I, dude i look at my credit score and see how many addresses i lived at within fucking six month period Mm -hmm. and i was taking over people's leases i was anywhere i could put a roof on my head bro that's why people can't tell me shit about anything bro they could they could say i'm not funny they could say that i'm not shit but first and foremost they will never outwork me bro when it comes to this shit because i've genuinely suffered and sacrificed for everything so i'm thinking of it now like bro like right now I, I woke up obviously I, I wake up every day in a great mood but today I was like man cool I'm being downtown Chicago do I heart after that do a podcast after that slide to my room in a in fucking downtown Chicago order my food off the phone fuck it you know what I'm saying like I, I genuinely feel good about a lot and so when you look back at your your your, your L's bro the, the, not not your losses but your lessons all the places where you fucked Ooh, up at wait say that it. again <laughs> hold on look hold on. back at all your L's bro not your losses but your lessons bro and I, I realized a lot, and you know, and I never gave up, bro. My dad was homeless growing up, bro. You feel me? Lived on a ranch, worked from worked from since he was five years old, and I was look back I'm like, bro, my pops could do it. Shit, ain't shit I can't do. I'm in the United States. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I like I said, I have a great. You know what I'm saying? I just I just went through a lot, and that's why I, I think as nice as I am, because I would never want anybody to go through what I did. But I fucking made it happen, and. Things are going really great right now. So that's why, like, you know, you look back at stuff. I don't get necessarily... I mean, I get emotional thinking about it sometimes, but it's, like, a good one. It's like, damn, you really fucking... You know, and this... Like, I'm not even getting started yet, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, and uh, now is when the blessings are starting to come. But I feel like it's 
from all the fucking hard work I had to put in now, you know. So it's beautiful, man. And I'll keep it a buck too, bro. I, sh- comics in general yeah. are fucking weird. <laughs> all right, I know. So I yeah. already know I got some fucking. They're gonna be some comedians watching this cringing. Yeah. But I'm sorry that your life wasn't filled with love. I'm sorry that your life wasn't filled with, <laughs> with people giving you a hug here and there because you're probably like Ugh, talking about family and shit. No, bro, my family love me, dog, and so. I know they're going to be like, it's not that deep. It is that deep, motherfucker. But since you fucking grew up in, what, Magmile over there, bro, on the north side, dude? <laughs> Silver spoon-ass motherfuckers, bro. But, <laughs> but I got it. Okay. okay. You know exactly what I meant, too, bro. I know. No. Like, so with the whole perception of comedian, com- they're generally speaking, yeah. Weird. They got a lot of darkness in them. I, I and, and this is yeah. I'm gonna include myself. Mm-hmm. Like the the guy you're talking to right now is yeah. not the same person pre pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, I I, I, be, I keep telling people if you met me pre pandemic, yeah. you'd be like, I don't want to be around this dude. Gotcha. I'd be I was angry. I was uh-huh. bitter. I was I I shysty in some yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. And the pandemic, you know, pressure makes diamonds, dog. I swear to God, yeah. The pandemic yeah, for yeah. me, it, that 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 grind you're talking yeah. about, I was like, I had time to think and process, and I I get it. If, in, in, I know what you mean by like them viewing it as corny. Yeah. I know. Um, I this podcast is known for people crying on it and shit. Oh, nice, bro. That's dope. <laughs> you gotta, bro, we do a lot of us have fucking trauma, bro. And yeah. So, Obviously, we use comedy as an outlet and shit, but it's like fucking people don't remember that we're human, you yeah. know, and this is all an act. Yeah. We go on stage, bro. The lights are on. It's a different person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, bro. You you, <laughs> you see me right now, and you're like, oh, my God. You see me on stage, and I'm like, this motherfucker's ignorant. Like, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about adultery. I'm talking about, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yeah. we all, you know, and so... We all seen shit. We all we want to talk about it, and the one way to talk about it is make make a joke out of yeah, it. Yeah. So, but it, it is what it is, man. I, 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 that's dope that that people can release their demon. I guess yeah. per se. And I love it. <laughs> Anytime I get an episode, I I I'm making tally marks. It's like I got another. <laughs> I got another tear. Hell uh, yeah. Oh. What what was? You don't gotta put yeah, this yeah, on yeah. there. But what was like the the saddest? The saddest one. Okay, there was one recently, and I've I've been um, uh, talking about it a lot. Yeah. What was her? I sh- I can't believe I'm I'm forgetting her name. Hold on a second. Hold on one second. I swear Shit. to God. Aaron pulled up Instagram. First thing I saw was I ass, know, bro. right? He pulled up. I saw nothing but ass on her. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> a little bit about me, man. Yeah. I have, I have a memory issue. Okay. From um, uh, childhood trauma okay. and and getting attacked. I got gotcha. sucker punched. Okay. So. Gotcha. I have a. Fu- I will not remember shit. Gotcha. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Claire Sunby. Do you know Claire? Yeah. So, okay, dude. So this podcast. She, she's she's dope, man. She, Shout out Claire, bro. She you, she's a hard worker, man. I'm gonna send you her episode. You oh, yeah. love her episode. It. I'm gonna talk a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay, bro. okay. So, this this podcast is weird for me sometimes because yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody that yeah. comes here. So it's in the beginning, it's always like okay, yeah. Feel, with Claire, immediate, just open, just just connect. Like I, I just, you know, when you meet someone and you just like get them. Yeah. Oh yeah. So she's talking about um, during the podcast. She talks about being a lesbian and kind of the yeah, experiences yeah, yeah. of that. And then we get into uh, the Laramie Project. Do you know what the Laramie Project is? I'm ignorant, bro. It's, <laughs> it's it's all good. It's um it's a play and it's about uh, a, a gay boy that was uh, murdered. He was murdered out here in somewhere in the Midwest. Oh, what? Yeah, okay. they beat the shit out of him. They like strung him up on a on a on a um, on a fence, and they yeah. just left him there to die. And Matthew Shepard, that was his okay. Name. And she's talking about the talking about the Laramie Project. She's talking about where she grew up, and she talks about how. See, I'm gonna get emotional thinking Go about ahead, that. But but she talks about how like how awful it was that this this young man who had a great future, I think he was like 17, mm-hmm. it just gets torn away, but how beautiful it was that his, what happened to him then creates art to help people like her, and it just yeah. it built, and then she got me going, because then I started talking about this tattoo, which has a long story yeah. to it. Long story short, it's about being black and the struggles that come yeah. with that, we just kind of connected. 
that was one of the ones that really it really got to me i have not stopped yeah, yeah. talking about that episode no nah, dude shout out claire bro she's good people's man yeah she's yeah a, she 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 put, bro i tell these motherfuckers man you better watch out for these female comics bro they're mm-hmm. fucking they a lot of them are workhorses bro and if they, they all work the fuck out of some of these males bro i swear to god and uh yeah so big shout out to the female comics in chicago yeah. bro and they really doing their thing they're making their stamps i gotta do my favorite my favorite female comedian hat dude it's so rough it's so hard bro yeah. because i've cackled at so many of them but dude two of them mo good and lisa laird bro are fucking mm. phenomenal mm. mo good and lisa laird will fucking i put her up i put them up against any dude with a dick like <laughs> like, <laughs> like mo and lisa bro ain't no oh bro fab monroe too yeah bro Fab Monroe, Mo, and Lisa, dog. I put those three against any of your three males, bro. Would you say that those are the three? See, I don't even want to put gender on it. Let's not even put gender on it. Uh-huh. Top three Chicago comics can't count yourself. Who would you say? I'm not in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, I, I love who I am. I love what I do, but I'm not there yet. Number one, bro, I got to give it up to the big bro, Ken Flores. Okay. I fucking admire him for who he is and what he does. Motherfucker's a monster. Uh, number two, another fucking monster, Vic Pandia. Vic Pandia is a fucking beast. Since I've met him, bro, he can do seven fucking mics on a night and still have his hair flashy as fuck, bro. It pisses me off because he's that handsome after doing seven. I do one headlining show, bro, and I'm like, <laughs> sweating and shit. Where am I? <laughs> so, Ken, Vic Pandia, and uh, third. Ah. Uh, Mm, that one's the third one's always hard because you don't want to leave because you're like trying how about to, this how about this take your time think about it and we'll just keep talking the but, name that okay. gets stuck with me bro and because i've remember i've cackled like i fuck. yeah jamal gashan bro jamal gashan do i know that person he he probably do bro he he uh he talks a lot of shit okay. <laughs> he's fucking hilarious um oh yes oh my bro, yes, Jamal's yeah, yeah, a fucking yeah, beast, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It's hard, bro. I do, cause okay. So let's say that's top three, whatever. Honorable mentions, I easily Zach O'Ryan, and like I'm friends with these people, right? Yeah. But if I'm friends with every comedian, I don't give a fuck if you're funny or not. I'm friends with you because yeah. you're you're fucking doing something different. You're doing something hard. Shit ain't easy. So regardless if you're funny or not, I still fuck with you and I respect you. Appreciate it. So with anybody you know what i'm saying but those are my top i would say my three favorites and then anybody uh, zach o'ryan's a monster fucking obviously mo good lisa lair cecilia gonzalez she she's hilarious fucking um you know you start thinking uh, gabriel alviso he's fucking funny we had him um, on too he's yeah. the one who told me to hit up ken oh nice yeah, yeah. bro he, he every time i do a show with him he's like all right he makes a fat joke so it's funny because ken, since ken is touring now yeah. i'm the fucking fat target now okay <laughs> so <laughs> shout out new one up, no? my boy uh, <laughs> rene humberto shout out to uh and then it's cool man i produced a show at laugh factory with gabriel and renee so both of them are, are my bros they're fucking hilarious and but, but there's just a lot of good ass fucking people in this community. That's one of the things that you know when I told when I told people like mm-hmm. I'm moving from California to Chicago. Yeah. Why would you do that? Uh-huh. Like, you're in California and there's LA and it's like you've been to LA. No. You have not been to LA yet. You'll go to LA. Let, when you no, when you go to LA and I and I mean this sincerely. Yeah. When you go to LA and you do stand up, please please message me and let me know what you think in terms of quality. I already heard stories. What have you heard? Not good things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you either so over there it's either you either sink or you swim. Mm. There's no necessarily There's no where, more class. No, because in Chicago it's the community is so good that you could still be mediocre and still get booked, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. But if you hit the LA, the issue is everybody's in clicks everybody's to themselves so you're either funny you gotta be funny if you're out there or there's no community for you mm-hmm. i is that right i would say was that description i would say that's ac- i would say it's it's not only but is it funny but it's clout yeah so like because it's saturated with people that and this is no offense to you as an actor but if there's a lot of people who who are actors or models mm-hmm. 
who are like, I'm gonna just do stand up because it's another mm-hmm. thing I can do. Yeah. But they don't have the 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 um, respect of the craft. Got you. And that that is what it rubs me the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And this isn't. I'll preface again. This isn't yeah. everybody in California. LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. But it's an energy. There's an energy to Chicago. Yeah. And there's an energy to LA. There's. I haven't been to New York. Have you been to New York? No, but I get the same thing, bro. Yeah. I've I've had a man. I'll get his name. I, I remember it. Um, but he was telling me, uh, Adam Adam Quaslow. Yeah, he he's from uh, New York, I believe, or he's done stand up out there. Mm-hmm. I remember asking him about it, and he was like, "It's very clicky mm. in New York." So that's why I get the concept of L.A. being almost the same thing. Now, but Chicago's different. Chicago's dope, bro. You get, bro. I'm telling you, man. I, respectfully. Yeah. I've, like I said earlier, you don't have to be funny for me to be a friend of yours. You don't have to be funny for me to be cool with you. I, if you get on stage, I'm cool with you because you're doing something that's difficult. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just know there's comedians that have never made me laugh or bomb frequently. Yeah. But I still fuck with them. Is you it? know what I'm saying? They, they're able, to, but they still get booked because they're good people. And it, they know how to network. I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's. The Chicago is not a sink or dive, com- not a sink or swim community. It's not. Well, it's. I think it's. I think on stage it's sink or swim. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, it's not. Meaning, meaning on stage, it to me there's more. There's just. I feel more pressure mm-hmm. on here to be funny in a good way. Yeah. Um, especially when I go to the South Side. Jesus. <laughs> Bro, I do trust me, more. I get booked for more black shows than Mexican shows. Yeah. Else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm at riddles all the fuck. <laughs> um, but but how do you, what is your so this all happened? I, I contacted you because you watched Ken's clip. Yeah. And <clears throat> we haven't really talked before that. How do you do are you friends with? Do you know him that well? Ken? Or, yeah. Yeah, bro. How uh, how close are you with Ken? Me and Ken, bro, we started he the first show we did together, I would say it was like three years ago and was at the Forge. So it was in my city. Mm. And uh, that was my first time meeting him. But I've heard of him. I've always heard of him. And they're like, you need to meet Too Skinny. You need to meet Too Skinny. That was his nickname. <laughs> and uh, you need to meet Too Skinny. Oh, cool. You remind me of Too Skinny. And we were the only two Mexican comedians with nicknames at the time. Yeah. So I was Baby Orchata at that point. And uh, so they're like, no, you need to you need a meet him. Okay, cool. We did a show at the Forge. We finally met. And it was hilarious. The fucking host. He was, mix, it mixed our uh, hometowns. All right, y'all. Here comes. He's from your city, Joe. Yeah, Ken Ford. I was like, no, I'm from. Yeah. And then he did me. He was like, all the way from Aurora. I was like, hold on. <laughs> like, so well, I met him there, bro. Ever since then, we just booked him all the time. Because I produce shows too. So I, yeah. anytime I can get Ken, bro, I threw him out because he's, he's a monster. He's dope. He's good people. And it's not, like I said, it's not just because he's funny, because he's good fucking people. Yeah. And uh, you seem. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Right, you, 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 that has been a running theme in listening to you is <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you're funny. It doesn't matter. To me, you, you want to be around good energy. I want to be good around good people, bro, because I've met good comedians that are fucking dicks. Ooh, you okay. know what I'm saying? So, like, that are assholes that are, like, they, they have this chip on their shoulder type shit, bro. And uh, I don't give a fuck if you're funny at that point. You're not going to make it far if you're a dick. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, bro. Because all the famous millionaire, whatever, famous people, millionaires that I've met are good people, bro. Mm. All the successful people that, that are there where I want to be, they're good people. Obviously, on the higher ranking people, you can meet both sides. But all the people that I know are good people. Would you say it's more important to be a good person than a funny person? See, that's raw. That's a great ah, question. Okay. That's a great question because obviously, you know what? I'll keep it a buck. Probably you got to be funny. Okay. Probably for for be, success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Kindness, probably kindness don't mean shit to a lot of people. Right. They don't value it per se. But I remember, I know when, when I get these private bookings, I'm thinking of my homies that are cool to me or good to me that, that like, it's always good energy around them. Like, I always put blessings and money in people's pockets that are good people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where I could definitely book funnier people, but I, I'd rather see someone that appreciates it over anything. How do you suss out who's a good person, who's a bad person? How do you feel it up? Bro, you can off the bat feel it, bro. It's all, dude, I'll keep it a buck. It's all in the intro. It's all when you see somebody. It's all in the handshake. It's all, because, dude, anytime I see Zach O'Ryan, this tall motherfucker will pat my head, hug me, (laughs) and he he gives good-ass hugs. But I've seen when he gives people hugs that he don't really fuck with. It's very, what's up, bro? 
Yeah. But like when he's hey, what up, Rube? You know, it's love, bro. Yeah. You know, and same thing, same thing with like Ty Riggs, bro. Ty Riggs, I love oh, Ty God. Riggs, bro. Hey, what up, Rube? You know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's up, dog? You good? All right, cool, man. Love you, dog. You have a good one. Peace out. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's energy, bro. There's no, and you can't, you can't finesse energy. You can't fake energy. You can't. And I've learned to read bullshit, bro. At, mm. a, at you know what I'm saying? I've learned to, to read all that 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 shysteness. I've re, learned to read all that shit, bro. Yeah. And because I, I, we're living in Peoria. There's a lot of small town mentality over there. So they'll always hit you with the, how's your little thing going on? How's your little comedy thing going on? I've learned to read slight comments like that. And then the people that you've grown up with, how's your little comedy thing going up too, bro? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I, I've, dude, I've known people my whole life, bro, from like when I was born in Joliet, moved out, came back, met them again. Bro, they've never bought one article of clothing, merchandise, a pin. Uh, they'll ask for free tickets. They'll, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like, hey, I'm your boy, right? Give me some free tickets. I'm like, what? Like, Support me first, bro. Like, let me see that you actually fuck with me. Yeah. And of course, I got you in the future. But, nah, man, it, dude, I, I'm so amazed. I could read all that shit, bro. That energy investment that you're yes. talking about. All That's... high introductions, bro. You'll see it, okay. man. I'm always, dude. If I fuck with you, you know I fuck with you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I can feel it. I, it, it it's, it's uh, intuition. It's your gut, dude. It's yeah. It's everything. Now that small town mentality. <clears throat> how come why? I have the assumption, but I don't want to keep bringing up your dad. <laughs> but how do you? Why do you think you don't have that? Because my dreams are are too big for it. Hmm. You go in a small town. You go in a pure. I mean, it's not necessarily pure. There's small areas around Peoria, right? Yeah. There's a spot called Pekin. There's a spot called uh, East Peoria. You know what I'm saying? There's small little locations, and they're filled with the same people that think some dreams are just impossible. Hmm. Those people are the same people that will complain about their situation and not do a damn thing about it. Those are the same people that say, I hate living here, but they stay living there. You know what I'm saying? I Not only do I know what you're saying, I was that person. So And, and you, you're able to recognize that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, bro, I've met so many people. Like, dude, trust me, bro. One time I went over there for a movie shoot. They had some type of film over there. I was in it. I, I go, and then for lunch, I went to beat ups. One of the waiters that I've known, I uh, went to high school with, like, hey, how's that little acting thing going? And, mm-hmm. like, I read it. I'm like, bro, it ain't, it ain't little, dog. I'm actually here for a film, too, bro. Like, yeah. And he was like, and he saw that, like, my energy shifted. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I got, you know, I knew where he was coming from. So if you're going to come that energy, I'm back. I was like, bro, you're literally going to serve me my wings. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. he, he lost 20% tip that day, bro, so... <laughs> it's yeah man the, this this game is i've come to learn is can be beautiful and fun mm-hmm. and loving and it can also be dark and slimy and you gotta like navigate mm-hmm. it's 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 been a learning process you'll realize that bro it's not all fucking you know sunshine and rainbows dog mm-hmm. that especially the days when you bomb bro you're driving home you're like fuck <laughs> i ain't shit i ain't never gonna be shit but then then the days you do fucking very well, and then yeah. you know you're like, ah, right, you know, I got this. I'm, I'm kind of funny, you know. But I got a series of questions that I'm. I'm Go I'm, ahead, bro. I'm trying to add them to the pot. I want to see how they Go work. Go ahead, dude, throw them, bro. I'm so excited. Go crazy. All right, let's say magically, uh, your elementary school self shows up and yeah. sees you and all the stuff you're doing. Uh-huh. What would your elementary school self say to that? What would they think of you? Oh, so an elementary. Yeah, when you were in elementary school, yeah. so when you were like 10. Yeah, okay. And you got to see yourself now. Yeah. How would 10-year-old self feel about you now? Oh, excited, bro. Yeah. I was always a bundle of energy, bro. So, like, if I'm able to show, throw my energy out and help other people, I'm sure my 10-year-old self. Because I was always a good kid, bro. I wasn't on no ghetto shit. Middle school self. Yeah. How would that version of you? Same, bro. Middle school, um... Obviously, middle school, bro, you focus on bitches and not fucking. <laughs> yeah. And I was in middle school, I was like, "Oh my god, my penis!" You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And uh, but yeah, I'm excited, man. I I really you know what the best part. I think next question would be high school, right? High school, and then yeah. So high school definitely would be going crazy because I dropped out, and so <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like I always had so many aspirations and goals, but I dropped out very early in high school in Joliet Central. Um, and maybe two months in type shit. You know what I'm saying? I dropped out. And uh, my my brother was a dropout too. So my dad was like, 
y'all not going to school i'm putting your guys' ass to work mm -hmm. all right cool so that's where we moved over by peoria because uh my uncle had a restaurant over there so mm -hmm. moved over there and that's when i went back to school and finished because i feel like Realized that work and all that ain't really silly for me, but yeah. um, made me grind my ass off at 13 years old, though. I'll say that shit. <laughs> but I'm excited. Yeah, my, my, yeah, because high school, I was really tapping into my personality. My personality has always been bubbly, out there, yeah. maybe doing too much. I don't give a fuck, but I was just always out, you know? And um, then obviously, college, bro. I think my college self would be happy because of what it's become. Mm -hmm. So it was worse dropping out <laughs> out of college. You feel me? So, because obviously in the first couple of months of doing a major thing like that, it's like shit. Yeah, is this gonna work out? Yeah, I think I'd love to have the peace of mind, you know, in college, knowing that you know what, it did work out. Yeah, I'm very happy you commented on Ken's clip. I'm very happy yeah. I got to talk to you. Oh yeah, uh, that energy thing. A little bit about what's going on in my life. Yeah. It has been a struggle recently, yeah. financially, mm -hmm. and you know when you you know when you're down and you're around someone that's like up and yeah. you're like, you know what? God damn it! I'm also <laughs> gonna get up. It, it. I'm 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 very blessed that you came to do this. Oh no, real shit, bro. Thank you for having me, man. It, and it's like I said, bro. This shit's uh. And like I said, I was gonna invite you to my hotel and look at dude over there, yeah. but it was it was uh. Time wise, bro, I'm trying to get my nap in. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I wanted to. I have one more Dude, thing. Dude, you go ahead, bro. Keep asking, bro. I'm chilling. All right, cool, cool. This is this has been my favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of split it into two for you. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you both. And the first one is, if you could say, and you can, you could literally say this to your dad now because uh -huh. he's around. <clears throat> but God for. How do, I, how do I word this in an appropriate way? Um, if I just if something me, were to ever happen to your dad, if, if he wasn't around tomorrow, what do you want to say to him? I don't even want to talk about it. You don't even want to talk about it? I don't even want to talk okay, about it. Okay, okay. Then here's my other question. Here's my other question. <laughs> You're about to make me cry, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> I earned those tears, man. man. No, out. but the other question is, is if you could say something to yourself five years from now. You're the camera. You mm -hmm. can say something, whatever you want to yourself five years from now. If I could say anything to myself five years from now, man, I hope. Hope, hope, hope that you ain't give up. Um, I hope that you're able to do your ultimate goal, which is retire your parents. Uh, I hope that uh, you are still spreading love, and I hope that you found true happiness. Okay, all right. Now let's take this picture. 